Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video, I'm just gonna go over motion blur with you. It's a question I get all the time and it's something that it's kind of forced me to look deeper as to how motion blur actually works in After Effects um, since I've been getting so many questions. So this is just gonna be kind of an overview of motion blur. If you already use motion blur in After Effects, you actually probably will still get something out of this video. Um, and if you don't use motion blur at all, this might be a little fast. You may have to watch it a few times, but I think that you will learn a lot about motion blur. So let's just go ahead and jump here into After Effects here. And I have this simple, um, it's like a knife spinning and flying um, into the wall. And you can see here that the top one has motion blur and the bottom one doesn't. Basically what motion blur does is it blends um, the object through motion, with motion. Um, whenever it's moving, um, it blends it like your eye does, like film does. Basically motion blur comes from when a frame is exposed on a camera. Um, the amount of time light is on that uh, frame and how much movement it, it, there is, that creates motion blur. That's why long exposure photography is really sensitive to camera movement because you get a lot of motion blur with that. Um, if you wanna know more about motion blur with cameras, you're gonna have to look that up, but um, that's the basis for motion blur in After Effects and just in the world of um, everything that involves motion blur, your eyes, video, film. Um, so in After Effects, how do you get motion blur? So um, the main way is with this setting here. So if you don't see this, uh, you could probably right click or um, yeah, you could right click and see columns. And you just wanna make sure, I think, uh, which one is it? It's called, it's called swatches or switches. So you wanna make sure you have switches turned on and uh, it's a setting here, motion blur. So each layer needs to be activated with motion blur if you want motion blur on that layer, as well as turning motion blur on um, so basically what this does, it enables the motion blur for all the layers in which you have motion blur turned on. So if I have, let's say this turned off, but this layer has motion blur on, um, you still don't get motion blur, okay? If I turn this on, I get motion blur, but if I turn it off on the layer, you get no motion blur. So that's how the motion blur works there. Um, another interesting thing is that if this is a composition, so if I hit Control Shift C and made this into a composition, it moved all attributes into the new composition, you notice here that when I, when I hit R on the keyboard, there's no position or rotation keyframes for this new composition that I built, okay? So all of the motion blur will now takes effect inside of this composition. So if I actually turn motion blur off on this layer and I jump back to this composition and I turn it on, you'll see I will get no motion blur at all. Okay, the only way I'll get motion blur on this layer is let's say I add new keyframes to this layer. Okay, but anything within that layer, that's where the motion blur is turned on. Okay, so if you know you want motion blur on a layer and you know there's gonna be a lot of subcomps, um, you're gonna wanna make sure you turn motion blur on. Um, let's see, what are some other interesting aspects? So one thing you'll notice is that this is actually running at a lower frame rate. So if I jump into composition settings here or control K, um, you can see that this is running at 24 frames per second. So uh, that also will impact your, um, your motion blur. But what really impacts your motion blur that people don't look at is under this advanced tag where you get shutter angle, shutter angle, um, shutter phase, samples per frame, and adaptive sample limit. So um, most people don't change these if you're getting into After Effects, but if you do a lot of com um, uh, composing or um, uh, what's the word? What, in VFX, when they add multiple layers um, for film and, and, mo and VFX, um, they need to match up the motion blur seen on camera with what's done in their animations. So. This is really important for them, but for newbies or for people that just do animations, it probably isn't, won't be that important to you. However, the shutter angle and the frame and the samples per frame will really impact the, I guess the the type of motion blur you're gonna get. And let's let's take a look at that that first. So, um, 
you can see the amount of blur going on with this knife here. And when I go and change this setting, let's say I change the shutter angle to 45, which is equates to the same shutter angle actually used in Saving Private Ryan on the beach scene. And you actually wind up with, let's see, you still appears to be the same. Okay, so I went ahead and backed up, uh, back to my regular layers here, and I want to show you what, another interesting aspect to After Effects that you probably don't utilize. Um, so if you go to Composition, Composition Settings, in here under Advanced, you actually get your Motion Blur, um, I guess, settings uh, per composition, right? So if you're a compositor, right, if you're working in film, TV, and you're doing a lot of compositing where you're taking real life footage, mixing it with uh, VFX and stuff like that, then you need to match your motion blur up and your shutter angle with what's used in the film and in the camera. So this is automatically set to, I think, 180 and zero with 12 frames or 12 samples per frame and 128 adaptive. So all, of the, these two are really the most important ones that you're gonna have to worry about. Um, 180 will give you good, a lot of motion blur. If you bring this down to let's say 45, you'll see that you get significantly less motion blur. Um, for something like Saving Private Ryan, they did a lot of scenes in 45 um, degrees. And the reason being is that it looks a little bit more gritty because you get a little bit more definition around the sharp edges. Um, but at 180, you'll notice you get a lot more. So if you change this, if you crank this up, you can you can be turned into a crazy man and crank this up. Let's see what that looks like. So that looks just totally insanity, like insanity. But that might be something that you actually want, right? That might be something you're looking for. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and drop it back down to 180. But let's increase the number of samples. So. It's a little bit hard to tell here. Let's see if maybe we remove the background. You could tell better. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell on this example. Let's see if we could find one that's a little bit um, easier to see. So I'm just gonna make a rectangle. I'm gonna change the color to white. And I'm just gonna change the position. I'm just gonna, for this example, just make the knives invisible so they don't get in my way. So you can see here, this illustrates it actually perfectly. So let me jump back into my, my settings here. By the way, it's control K if you wanna know the frame shortcut. The number of samples is how smooth the blurring gets, right? So if it's at 64, it's gonna tax your, your CPU. It needs to render those um, significantly more, I guess, complicated or I don't know what the word would be, but it just takes more processing power for that level of detail. Um, it's automatically set to 12. Um, I don't really understand how adaptive works. I checked out some other videos and actually the other person that made a video like this um, also didn't know why this wasn't working or why it wasn't operating the way you would expect it to work. Um, so let's say I turn that to two and I, inc and I crank that up. It, it actually doesn't seem to do anything and I, and I don't really know why. Um, so let's see. Yeah, at two, you get very little amount. If you crank it up to 64, you're gonna get a significantly smoother effect. So if you ever notice that your anime, that your uh, motion blur isn't necessarily as smooth as you'd like, um, due to really fast motion, so the faster you go, the less smooth it will be at that lower, at that lower setting. So I think it's set to 12 initially. So you can see when it happens really, when it's the motion is really fast, it's not that bad. But as motion becomes extremely fast, you can tell that that doesn't really look that great. And uh, when you play it back, it might look okay. But realistically, if you just come into the composition settings and increase this to 64 or you know 30, 32 or what, you know whatever suits your your fashion, um, you are going to get a little bit better motion blur there. For some reason, you can't really tell too much with the throwing knife, and I'm not really sure why. 
Let's see. It's a little bit strange. I don't know why that's the case. But um, you should, it should be a little bit, well, it's a little bit hard to tell. I don't know if there's just something wrong. Um, I'd have to go back and check, but um, that's just kind of the basics for motion blur in After Effects. And, and I hope you learned something new. I hope this kind of opened your eyes a little bit to some of the deeper behind the scenes settings in After Effects that are used for um, serious post-production teams. Um, that maybe you don't really identify as something useful to you or you don't even know it's there because you've never needed to look for it. But it's all these types of things that could really improve your workflow and improve the look and get you the look that you're after. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit off topic, but um, you know, there's only so many things you could do in After Effects that aren't just a combination of other things you already know how to do. And so I thought that this was actually pretty interesting. So. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, check out other videos on this channel. And as always, thanks for watching.